Good evening, and thank you for joining me tonight. I'm Bill Betlay, the lay leader for Calvary United Methodist Church in Stewart's Draft. This is our fourth week of our Vesper prayers. Each Tuesday night at 7.30, we join together for this simple sunset or evening prayer service. Evening prayer simply allows us to pause and give thanks for the day just passed and also make an evening sacrifice of praise to God. We have created our own form that we hope will work in this time of virtual gathering. We will begin with a short prayer, then I'll lead a reading of a psalm, and I hope you will join me in the responses, which will appear in yellow on your screen. I'll follow that with a very short homily, just a brief story to allow you to consider your everyday walk. I'll end that with another prayer. Finally, we will say a good night prayer together. I hope you will feel relaxed and thankful and be ready to start your nighttime rest. So let's begin. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the moon rises to light the night sky. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Come now, bless the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our responsive reading, our psalm tonight is 109. Again, join me for the responses in yellow. May that be the reward of my accusers from the Lord, of those who speak evil against my life. But you, O Lord, my Lord, act on my behalf for your name's sake. Because your steadfast love is good, deliver me, for I am poor and needy. And my heart is pierced within me. I am gone like a shadow at evening. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting. My body has become gout. I am an object of scorn to my accusers. When they see me, they shake their heads. Tonight's scripture reading will be from the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. I read this quote a while ago. One lives in the hope of becoming a memory. One lives in the hope of becoming a memory. Antonio Perchia said that, and I think that it's full of truth. I walked through a cemetery recently. It is the burial ground of my father and mother. To get to their graves, I passed by many others. I noted the names and the years, 
but they were not memories to me. I did not know them, although I wondered about them. I know they were real people, though I had never met them. They had mothers and fathers just like me. They may have had sisters and brothers. They certainly had friends, maybe even enemies. Before she retired, my wife Sharon worked as the client care coordinator for Home Instead Senior Care in our area. Her job was to respond to inquiries from potential clients who were seeking care assistance so they could stay in their homes and not move into an assisted living facility. She would explain the services Home Instead could offer and the fees, but then she would talk with the potential client and begin to build a plan of care. That included finding out about that person's story. Now, privacy laws prevented her from telling me who these clients were, even when it may have been someone we may have gone to school with. But she could share with me their stories. Many of them were remarkable. All of them were interesting. Whether those persons spent their journey all around the world, or in the work of some new discovery, or simply living and loving their own families, I learned that every person's journey is memorable. Every person in that cemetery has a story, a life they lived along their physical and spiritual journey on this earth. There are people in that cemetery that I knew. No, make that I know. They may be gone physically from this earth, but their stories are still with me. Some I stood graveside as they were committed to the ground. Some I know only by what others have told me of their lives and journeys. When the angel revealed the journey Mary would take, I suspect it wasn't the life journey she was dreaming about. There were twists and turns to navigate. As I wound my way around and by the grave markers, I felt I was in a labyrinth. A labyrinth is a pathway that teaches you to journey backwards and forwards to get from beginning to end. The journey becomes a process, never a race. In that cemetery, my soul was walking a labyrinth. I learned the cycle there, lessons told and retold throughout our experience the cycle of life vision. One day, I hope a young person finds their way to my headstone to sit and pray and remember that I once had a story and that my soul walks a journey. Some of that journey happened this day. I'm thankful that God was with me. I'm glad that others were with me. And I end this day satisfied that I did some good along the way. But now it is time to rest. Rest and prepare for more journey tomorrow. My God, I thank you that you take my hand and walk with me in this journey. I am glad you point out the stones on which I may trip. I thank you that you direct me when I approach all the forks in the road. And I thank you that you are right there to help me up when I stumble or waiting patiently for me to turn around and return to the right way when I do take a wrong turn. Amen. Today's walk is finished. Now we rest and prepare so we might proceed onward when morning comes. Join me with our good night prayer. The words are on your screen. Dear God, thank you for your great love and blessing over our lives. Thank you that your favor has no end, but it lasts for our entire lifetime. Forgive us for sometimes forgetting that you are intimately acquainted with all of our ways, that you know what concerns us, and you cover us as with a shield. We ask for your guidance so that we might walk fully in your blessing and goodness today. We ask that you face would shine upon us, that you would open the right doors for our lives and for our loved ones, and that you would close the wrong doors and protect us from those we need to walk away from. Establish the work of our hands and bring to fulfillment all that you have given us to do in these days. We pray that you would make our way purposeful 
and our footsteps firm out of your goodness and love. Give us a heart of wisdom to hear your voice and make us strong by your huge favor and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me. We will be here on the Calvary United Methodist Church Facebook page again next Tuesday night at 7.30 for our Vesper prayers. And I hope we can all be together again then. Good night.